Hi, welcome to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. Um, an interesting little project came in uh, that I thought I would share with you guys. Um, one of my neighbors uh, got a, uh, a little vertical bandsaw. Um, I'm not, I don't know where he got it, but it uh, before he got it, it had fallen over or gotten, uh, gotten injured somehow. I'm not quite sure how it got injured. Um, what happened was... Uh, there's a couple of parts here. Um, this is the uh, um, the adjuster for the uh, upper band wheel that uh, um, tensions the blade on the vertical band saw. I think it's a, it looks like a delta. I haven't even seen the saw. He just brought the parts over and uh, asked if I could help out. Uh, it's kind of an interesting project because we can use a couple of techniques that you don't see all the time uh, to, uh, to help repair them. This thing's, this thing's in pretty good shape, it's okay. Um, the part that really got damaged is, is this bit right here. Um, and you can see it's broken in, uh, in two pieces. And what this guy is, is um, the, uh, the band wheel sits on this, uh, the bearings of the band wheel sit on this uh, hardened stud here. And uh, this thing uh, does the blade tracking. So this little arm here that broke off, uh, a screw pushes on that and it tilts the wheel and um, gets the blade tracking where you want it. Uh, so it's pretty important that it, that it work. Um, it's not a lot of force on this thing uh, when it's being used. Uh, some from the blade tension and uh, um, but uh, not a ton. Um, it, but you need to be able to adjust that. You can't just set it and forget it. It's not one of those kind of adjustments. Now, the problem here is the material. This is a die casting. And in the welding world, in the machining world, we call this pot metal. And it's basically caca. It's a zinc, aluminum, and who knows what else mixture that's dirt cheap and uh, it it uh, works well in permanent molds uh, where they just preheat the mold and they're making millions of these things and they're just squirting this stuff in there and they cool it off and boom it drops into a bucket and then they machine it or whatever anyway uh, um, so as long as it doesn't break it's fine uh, but when it breaks it becomes a problem for guys like me uh, that help out and repair things uh, that's when it becomes a problem so just by experience handling this stuff, I can tell this is, and looking at the, looking at the grain structure and the break, you can see that this is uh, most likely uh, unweldable, and uh, and it's probably not even worth my trouble to weld it. And in fact, this is what welders call one of those crappy little jobs, right? Because you can work on this for hours trying to weld it up and get it cleaned out and get it joined together and uh, and it, it's just going to look like a seagull flew over this and and, uh, and laid an egg on this thing. So instead of that, uh, I'm just going to like not even bother trying to weld it and I thought it would be an interesting project to just make a new one. Um, so it's not a difficult part, uh, but it's got some geometry on it that uh, that is kind of, you know, mildly interesting. Uh, for the video viewing crowd um, that you guys get, might get a kick out of. We'll use some uh, old time tool maker techniques to do some stuff here. Um, so it's kind of cool. And uh, we use some modern tools to, uh, to do that. So, uh, um, and you'll see more, more later when we get started on this. So it's got <clears throat> basically this even looks like it's hard chromed or something, I don't know. Uh, maybe it's, it looks like it's chrome plated, this shaft. Um, I'm guessing this is hard or uh, a little bit hard at least. And it's pressed or sits in this uh, uh, cast zinc housing. And then what they did was they drilled and drove a, uh, a little roll pin through the thing. And that's the first thing we're going to have to get out of there to get this. I'm not going to make a new one of these uh, shafts. There's no need to. This thing is... It's fine. Uh, it's it's uninjured. Um, it's just this the, the casting part that's messed up. Um, so we're gonna get that out of there first, and uh, then we'll take some measurements. And uh, um, I got a little. If 
figure we'll just use some aluminum here, some good old 6061 here, and uh, um, we'll make that little guy right there. Um, so let's get going here. And uh, first thing is uh, I'm gonna get this pin out of here. So I gotta do a little bit of a uh, little bit of gouging uh, to clear a path so I can drive this pin out of here and uh, and get it out of there. So we'll get going on that and uh, have some fun here. Okay. Well, I was going to grind this thing, um, but uh, what I decided to do is, is first uh, try this uh, uh, bastard cut uh, um, rat tail file here just to carve away some of that material. And it turns out that this stuff's pretty soft. You can see it's just, it's just flying out of there. And sometimes I'm kind of old school a little bit, you know. I. Uh, I like to use hand tools and uh, you know I like putting my hands on the material and stuff like that. Yeah, power tools are faster, but this job isn't about making money, you know. It's uh, kind of having fun doing the work, which is what I do this stuff for. And, um, um, and it, it just gets you in touch with the materials, you know. You get a sense of uh, how they behave and, uh, and uh, you know, what their deal is. So this is, uh, you know, and I can talk while I'm doing it, right? Until I run out of breath. Um, all I'm doing is just trying to clear out around this uh, this roll pin that's in here. So I can, uh, I don't know if you can see that right there. There's a little roll pin sticking in right there. I'm just going to kind of clear some of this out of the way. Oop. And then I can get a punch at it there and, uh, and punch it out of there. At least that's the plan. See how that goes. material is kind of like a cross between zinc, lead, and aluminum. You know, it's got some of the qualities of each one and, uh, and none of the strengths of it. So, uh, somebody brings you something in pop metal, beware. I haven't seen uh, too many things that uh, can weld on it and join it successfully. Yeah, that's pretty close there. Getting onto it. Got another file here. I don't know if any of you guys have seen this. This is um, a Nicholson file. It's called a super shear. Um, so it's kind of a curved tooth uh, file for soft materials. Um, but it's got these these uh, slashes through the teeth that help break the chips. Um, this thing like tears it up. It's uh, not right for every job, but it really remove soft material you can see the chips coming off of there it is, it's like an end mill so and it leaves a really nice finish too on these soft materials all right well i think i can get at that and punch it now Let's try that. All right, let's see what we got here. do now is uh, I'm just going to grab this and lever it out of there. I 
And the reason I'm doing that is uh, uh, I don't have a straight shot with the punch and I don't want to wedge my punch in there and, uh, and bend my punch. I should be able to just grab it like a nail and just pull it out here. That's a pretty long pin. We're, we'll save that because we may use it again. Um, let's see. And that comes right out. So, yeah, so that's unfortunate, but the, uh, um, the hole here, it looks like it was just drilled kind of randomly through the, uh, through the part. It's not in the center. Yeah, it's off center. I don't know if you can see that, which always makes it a pain in the ass to, uh, to pick up again. But, uh, uh, so maybe what we'll do in this case here is we'll, uh, uh, make this a, uh, a press fit in the new part here. Uh, Describe in a minute. In there. Okay, so there's the, uh, there's the part that we're going to be doing. And there's the busted piece. Let's see, it's like that. I think it was like that. Well, I filed away a lot of the uh, the registration there. Oh yeah, there it goes. Anyway, that's what we're gonna make. We'll make a new one of those. So. All right, so we're gonna take some measurements here on some of this. So I'm just gonna make a little chicken sketch here, kind of the the rough uh, the the rough shape of the part here. Okay, then the other thing we're gonna do is this, uh, this radius here. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got two steps in it, or well, two radiuses, a smaller one and a larger one here. Um, it probably doesn't need the, uh, the step, but we're gonna go ahead and put that in there anyway, just cause we can, and, uh, and it makes for a funner little job. Um, so we'll go ahead and put that in and, uh, uh, as well. And, um, yeah, okay, what's going to happen there? Well, this would be interesting. See how some of this stuff uh, blends in there. Um, okay, all right. All right, let's cut this guy out on the do all here. this block up to dimension um, and um, knock it down to thickness also uh, and then what we'll do is we'll put our main holes in it um, our hole for our pin and then our uh, holes for our uh, our, our pivot and uh, those kind of lock everything in uh, uh, while it's a nice shape that's easy to pick up edges and stuff like that so I've got a couple of good edges on this uh, and I'll just go ahead and uh, square this guy up and uh, we'll get it going. So. Using a uh, 
uh, AB Tools. Um, you see that? AB Tools uh, Shear Hog. This is a real high positive. This thing you could probably shave with it. Um, this is an awesome cutter for aluminums and plastics and soft materials. Um, I've used it on stainless a little bit just for just a little really light skim cut, but uh, it's generally for soft materials. So, you gotta call it in there. So that's about two and a half. Um, I gotta go <coughs> grab my drawing. <clears throat> All right, we're looking for a two inch 475 on that. So two inch, five fifteen. So about forty thousandths to come off of there. And normally, if you were doing real accurate work, you'd check it while it's still in the machine. But uh, this is, uh, you know, we're duplicating a casting here that's uh, um, not exactly the precision deal. So it is what it is. So uh, this will be a lot better than the uh, than the uh, the one that came out of there. So uh, um, can hardly go wrong with this. All right, 478, couple thousand big, that's fine. It's gonna be okay.
All right, that cleaned up on the, the first pass there, so. Okay, this dimension is not as fussy since uh, we're going to bandsaw that uh, uh, that curve that you saw in the uh, in the original piece. So we're about fifty thousandths long there. Um, I think I'm just. Eh, you know what? I'm going to take a little more. Take another two tenths. Okay, so that's got a good cleanup on it now. So what I want to do is I want to deck this off to thickness. And uh, so we'll switch back to our, our shear hog. You notice I'm using the same size shank here. Uh, it saves a collet chain. So if you have end mills uh, with uh, you know some of your uh, often used tools, shank sizes, um, you can save some collet changes and some horsing around there. So let's zero out here. I'm gonna zero this quill feed. So I'm just gonna go to clean this up just a little bit. I'll take a 10 or 12 thousandths pass off of that. And then I'll take the, the bulk of the material off of the other side. Normally you try to make it even but this is a small part so it's not going to be a problem and you can see that's leaving a really nice finish there so it's just a wonderful tool this one's an inch and a half in diameter I'm running about 1800 RPM right now, and it's as smooth as silk. Alright, I'm going to zero that little guy. Let's get this out of the way. All right, this is one inch two fifty-five, so about an inch and a quarter. And uh, geez, that's a lot to come off of there. Um, Eight forty, geez. Okay, so that's a little ways to go there. Let's uh, let's mark that and see what it looks like. Oh yeah, that's. So, geez, that's like a three-eighths of an inch that's got to come off of there. 
Yeah, almost seven sixteenths. Um, I think I'm going to bandsaw uh, some of that off of there and then uh, come back and then mill that off. 